Hey y'all, it's Anime Game, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Grand Bell Episode 2. And I'm going to start the live reaction in 1, 0, go! Alright, let's see what we're going to get. Hopefully we get some plot explanations though. I wouldn't mind if they tone it down on the action for this episode. Just to get more reason as to why there's fighting. Oh, okay, I guess fan service. Oh my! <laughs> Shingetsu! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Okay, but you know, that's a great way though, of setting things up. At the very least though, with those two, they're probably going to be able to talk it out, and then Mangetsu's going to be able to hopefully learn more about the scenario that she's in. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Who knows though? Now, let's see. So these are all our cast of characters. All right, they've got, I think they've got pretty sweet character designs. Can't wait to see them all. I just wonder if I have enough time to like give focus to each and every one of these characters, though. That's assuming this is like a one core that's twelve or thirteen episodes long. Because I've seen animes try to have their large ass cast and they fall apart. And some of them succeed, but most of them fell, though, to juggle such a large cast. I've never seen that last season with a baseball-related series. It was Hachigatsu Cinderella 9. Yeah, now let's just say it's, it, it boshed everything. And, and that show tried to be somewhat ambitious. Wait, wait, wait. Going by the photo... It looks like she can get to hung out with that chick, huh? Aww. I mean, I guess it'd be understandable that'd be worried for Mongets. <laughs> True, because then she'd have to come up with an excuse. This is this. <laughs> I'm assuming she gets to probably doesn't live with her parents. And, and that's probably why she's dumbfounded at the scenario. They should do it! She should do it! I want to see that. <laughs> this is just so cute with her face puffed up like that. <laughs> I didn't think she would have to use whatever hypnosis ability she has, though. I think it would have resolved the scenario easily. But okay. We get a capa we get a have a grasp but she can get this capacity in a simple sequence. Oh that's convenient. <laughs> Looking at her face, she might abuse her abilities for fun. Probably. Mm. I'm saying it was. Mm -hmm. Unless she's a character that lost her memories and all that kind of jazz. Oh. Okay, that's pretty cool. Hmm. 
Oh. I'm assuming she has to keep that safe during battle. If not, I'm assuming she will lose the ability to use her um her uh, mecha. <laughs> this woman. I mean, this girl. And who would believe a face like that is lying? Hmm. This is a... I mean, I guess Shigetsu would want to do that for her. Oh. I guess it makes sense. She wouldn't want her to be in a dangerous scenario. I can see where she's coming from. I like how she's able to make that joke. I guess it shows us so much against his personality, though. Because let's just think about it. It shows her she's kind of selfless because she could have easily kept her with the memories intact. And it would probably help Shigensu a lot for Mangetsu to have her memories because she's by herself. I mean... <laughs> So it's natural that she would actually want to erase the memory. So at least at the moment. Originally, anyway. Hmm. Huh. Oh. So that's how it works. Oh, so so there's some there's boys too. Okay, at least I look like a boy. Body double. Kind of sounds to a similar console like the JoJo stands in a, to a certain extent. Yeah, that chick looks pretty fucking shady. Looks cute, but you know in animes, you can't completely trust cuteness. At least that situations, you can't. I like it though, how she's not necessarily accepting the battle, but at the same time, she's not 
necessarily rejecting it. She's thinking about all the ramifications. I like that. Whoa. Okay, that kid looks like an edgelord. Wonder what that person's deal is. Dang! <laughs> oh. Well, at least we get an establishment of what happens when you lose your Armanox. You don't die, but you just lose your um, ability to utilize the mecha. It's actually nice to finally get that information established, because I literally thought that person died for a sec. Although, in a way, that kind of lowers the stakes, though. All things considered, because that means when you lose there, there isn't a death. There isn't death involved, so that kind of does lower the stakes a bit, in a way. The only way they can up it is if they explain, if they have one of the characters with like a devious goal of wanting to like become one of those strong mages to take over the world. That's the only way they can up the stakes, but they kind of lower their stakes a bit. <laughs> Realistically speaking. I honestly don't know if that was... Oh. This looks like it could be fun. Oh my. Is she gonna try to play dirty against... Oh, okay. Shit, I was paranoid for this sec. I was worried for the sister of Mongetsu for a bit. She looked like an adorable dork there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna be our favorite edge. It's our favorite edge lord. I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's on her for fucking doing that shit out of nowhere.
All right. I'm assuming that's when their friendship starts forming. Dang! Dang! I would have at least gotten a one for myself, you know, and let them have the rest. But at the very least, we do get Mangetsu's a bit of her personality in that simple sequence, though. We get to see that maybe she's the type that doesn't really think about herself that much, and she thinks more about others. I think that's a pretty nice sequence. Could lead to something more in a future episode, too. This simple sequence. And she's doing it again! Feels like the type that um, people would easily take advantage of her, which sucks. Yeah, I mean, that's not bullying, but that's taking advantage of her nice nature. Oh, so she doesn't have much of self-esteem, then. Yeah, definitely has low self-esteem. Inferiority complex. Oh... Interesting though, that's a good justification as to why she does things the way she does. Oh. Recognition. Hmm. Not a bad goal. Hmm. Oh, that's why she didn't necessarily reject it then. Okay. I'm sure she must have something. Hmm. Then she'll probably get some recognition. Oh, yeah. Okay. It all makes sense now. At least now we... I wonder, I wonder if she's trying to, oh I see, she's trying to make her, f trying to, oh, interesting perspective for her. And yeah, Shingeto has a point. What? But Mangeto has her sweet family though. I mean... Hmm... But I mean, it is natural for her to feel like that, though. But... We all know, though... We all know in a way that she is wrong. Her family would feel sad. And I'm pretty sure someone at school would feel sad. If she were to disappear. Hmm.
All right. Good. I like how she's on the light side and she's on the dark side. All right. I love that determination. Oh yeah, she is gonna be an overpowered motherfucker agency. Oh lord. Oh no, I have a... Okay. Let's hope when she goes to the Grand Bell again. Hopefully she can win some of the fights through strategy. It's kind of worrying me a little bit. When a character has an overpowered mech. Because I've seen where that shit goes. Usually it isn't pretty, but sometimes it can end up to be something really well written. Oh! White haired girl, probably. With the red. Oh no! this episode. I'm gonna rate it... Let's see. Obviously not as good as episode one. Episode one set the bar pretty high, but I think it was a good episode. Of a scale of one to ten, with one being abysmal, ten being exceptional, five being average. I think this was a solid seven out of ten. Because for one, the very least with Mongetsu, she's had enough time to think it over to think whether she would want to fight to the point where now she decides that she wants to fight and it feels natural. We get justifications for that with her mentioning along the lines that no one ever really recognizes her so in a way she wants to do this to get recognition to feel special because she doesn't have any innate talents. That right there I believe is a really positive element about this show because it's relatable to almost anyone. Pretty sure there's a lot of people in the world that feel like they're underappreciated in life or they believe that people don't give a shit about them and they just want to do something to stand up from the crowd. And I think Mongetsu represents that pretty well. So I like that. But then again, I like how Shingetsu mentions like the weight of having all that power though, you know? So in a way, this episode had a lot of positive elements into it from a character standpoint for these reasons. And that's why I fully did well from the character standpoint. And let's see what happens right now, next time. Shink. Oh, okay, that's her name, Anna. Huh. Alright, looks like we're gonna get some cool fighting. And not just that, aside from giving us narrative purposes for why Mongetsu wants to participate, at least for the most part, I do like how this episode additionally also at the very least shows Mongetsu's sister a bit too in these sequences, implying that she might be used for a grander narrative purpose too. So I enjoyed that. And then the conversation sequences didn't feel like pointless exposition. It felt like natural dialogue because naturally all these questions that Mongetsu had would be questions that naturally a person in her spot would ask for because, well, she, no one really ever told her anything about this mage stuff. So it'd be natural that those would be the questions coming out of her mouth and naturally Shingetsu would provide those answers so that we, the audience, can learn about this. So that's also another positive element about this episode. The exposition here is useful and it isn't a waste of time. Now, naturally, there are some downsides about this episode, though. Like, for example, they kind of lower their stakes a bit when they reveal that your um, the crystal gem thing, it just darkens up and it becomes worthless, but you don't die. So that's going to make the fights 
the mega fights feel like they're gonna have less weight because some of the best mecha series like Gundam and Evon Genesis Evangelion what sets them apart aside from having these great characters what really sets them apart is the stakes like a lot of the confrontations that have narrative weight there's weight when there's the death of a character you feel it like you really fucking feel it especially in a fight because you know that fight could lead to the death of someone major here now when we see Future Pass, it's gonna be like, oh, okay, I guess they just lose their fucking gem, that's it. No one fucking dies. So I'd say that's the downside about this episode. It could develop the fights into just pure spectacle. And don't get me wrong, spectacle is fun to watch, but it could be a barrier towards the enjoyment factor of this specific anime, you know? Now, they could,